welcome those on live. We're about to start our season finale. Yep. Of Homegirls episode three. Yep. yep. Which is always a good time. <laughs> so first thing we're gonna do is uh, watch the video. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Oh, by the way, it's on code. Yes. It's on code. All right. Let's watch it's this. on code. Exhaustive resource, and we're certainly not experts. But we thought we would just kind of um, share a little bit about what we've learned about the truth of no building codes. First of all, we'd like to just clear something up. We live in a county that has no building codes, and that's important. There's a lot going on there. One, building codes are usually administered by a county or a city. We live in a county. And so our county does not have building codes, but there are cities nearby that do. Something we didn't know, but we know now. The other reality is that that's building codes. This cheap American- What? <laughs> it gave us an ad. A commercial. It not was only played for 30 seconds. Not the ad. All codes. So when we had our septic put in, who administers the septic stuff? The state. Right? So we don't have to get a city permit or a county permit. You get a state permit. So I don't know of a single state in the United States that doesn't have some sort of septic code. Right. That doesn't mean that people don't get, uh, everybody goes and gets a permit. I'm just saying that if you think that you're going to go buy land in the middle of nowhere and you're not subject to any codes, you might want to do a little research. I'm not saying I. All right, so I like that blurb. I know it's kind of long, but he talks about the difference between city, county, and state codes. Yeah. Which is really good for our topic today because building code is complex. Yeah, it's really like confusing. Yes. <laughs> Just from me researching it, I had no idea what I was <laughs> what I was reading, but <laughs> And not only that, it's difficult to research the difference between your city, county, and state codes. Like what code am I supposed to be following? Yeah. So, especially for Harris County, you yeah. know. I feel like it's definitely not very clear. <laughs> yeah. So, we're going to try our best today to explain. Also, this couple is called Pure Living for Life and I, they make me a little uneasy. <laughs> really? I, I, they seem like one of the, I'm not, okay, if you're listening, pure living for life people, I'm not trying to be offensive, but they seem like one of those people that like does everything for the likes. Oh, like okay. Instagram, TikTok, uh -huh. family. Does that make sense? Like the Ace, fan, uh, yeah, Ace Family kind yeah. of. <laughs> it, it kind of made me, I mean, the, what the information they gave was perfect for no, what yeah. we needed. It was very good information. But them as a whole makes me a little uneasy because I feel like they're just doing it for the for the gram. It's just for the looks. For the tube. Yeah. Is that what we call you? Is that what the kids are calling YouTube these days? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I think they just call it YouTube, but. Uh. <laughs> the tube. Well, I'm starting it. It's the tube now. So. <laughs> On that note, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And today we're talking about building codes. But more importantly, it's our season finale. Yep. We made it. <laughs> I feel like this was the longest season ever. <laughs> I think, I feel like last season was longer in uh, 2020 because of all the crazy with COVID. Yeah, that's also true. That's yeah. true. There was like three months when we couldn't even record anything. Yeah, that's, so, that's true. I But I, I do feel like this season did drag. Yeah, a little bit. I a don't even think... We didn't record it all in September, did we? No, it was just a crazy, yeah. crazy month. Crazy month. It was one of those months... Which is everything happens. <laughs> uh, another thing, our background is different. Yeah, there's a nice wall. And I know. And Bill Murray. And Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I want the raccoon back, but when they did the wall, they didn't install the correct mounting for the raccoon. I know the ra the raccoon is just like staring at us. I know. Right now, and we got Bill Murray. <laughs> if you're listening to us on Apple or iTunes or um, Spotify or whatever, go to the YouTube and look at our background. It's actually a really nice wall wood. It, it is. was installed by Chris I, and Josh like Gibson. And you know, I I don't I care. Have I don't care for Bill Murray. Yeah. I don't. But whoever painted it did, did 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 a good job. They did. It's a very <laughs> nice original oil piece by Scott Jacobs. Yeah, so. I like like the colors. Yeah, like. I mean it has a lot of detail yeah, in it. Yeah, it does. You it can't does. tell from like this far, but up close, it's a lot of colors in there. It looks really nice. But um, Bill Murray, I'm sorry. I don't yeah, know. having said that, I still prefer the rac the raccoon. Yeah, to Bill Murray. So Me too. next for season four, I need to get the mounting done. Yeah, so we can hang up the raccoon. When it's sorry, our Bill turn. Murray. Yeah, sorry, Bill Murray. No offense. I liked internal uh, the Royal Tannenbaums. 
Was he in Royal Tan? No, uh, he was in Life Aquatic with Steve Azuzu. Never seen it. <laughs> Do you not know Wes Anderson? No. <gasps> oh know. my God. You are missing one of the most amazing directors in the world. Okay. Oh. So you need to look up Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Maybe I have heard of it, but. Yes. You've gotta, seen like I the Grand check. Budapest Hotel, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Wes Anderson. Oh, okay, okay. Or Island of Dogs. That's a really good one. Okay. Also, Wes. Yeah. Or, um, oh God, what is the, the really, even a really good coming of age one that I will look up when you're talking and bring it back up. Anyway, if you're listening, this podcast go look up Wes Anderson do it Bill Murray's in quite a few of his movies oh yeah. okay okay um and he's Steve Azuzu I think in the life aquatic was Steve Azuzu oh okay okay anyway it's a good movie whatever I don't <laughs> way too much digression here um I think this season's been a good success though yeah I really like the topics we went over this season it was really interesting it was really fun to learn about the house specifically yeah this is our first ever themed season yeah which is a sure. pretty big deal um i'm not sure if we'll be doing a se- a theme season for season four yet because like, some of the topics i have are a little too random yeah we don't like go together <laughs> yeah this season i think really worked out well yeah, for as sure. far as a theme uh, i kind of wanted to recap our theme if we could yeah, let's do it yeah let me let me pull up i can't even remember what we did so i actually have to pull up my notes from this i remember a few it's just like it's been over the span of a a while so yes (laughs) when did we start this season i don't know that's what i was trying to think i don't know look up i have oh my god i have january for carbon monoxide so yeah it was probably like the beginning of the year wow Wow, so the season has taken a really long time. Yeah. So we started, uh, if you recall, our listeners, our theme this uh, season was the house and mm-hmm. the different things, horrible things that can happen to you living in a house. Yes. And some funny things. Um, we talked about carbon monoxide. Yeah, I liked that. I like that topic. Yeah, not a joke, right? Yeah. It, uh, radon, yeah. which, you know, we don't really have a problem with mm-hmm. here. Radon. But the fact that the earth is emitting radiation to poison us just blows my mind. Yeah. I was about to say, what did we do to you, Earth? And then I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. We did a yeah. lot. So <laughs> we probably deserve that. Never but. mind. Never mind. Take it back. Uh, we deserve it. Uh, pesticides. That was a crazy one. Yeah, pesticides was a crazy one, too. That is capitalism run amok. The fact that they can just poison us and get away with it. And there's like no government regulation. Mm-hmm. Very, very scary. Asbestos was an interesting one, yeah, too. Yeah, asbestos was good, too. Uh, we learned that asbestos is not as like dangerous I mean, it's dangerous, but it's not going to like kill you yeah. in your house. Yeah, for sure. Unless you're working in an asbestos factory. Yeah, the odds are, are low. They yes, are low. the odds are in your favor. Yeah. Yep. As the Hunger Games mm-hmm. would say. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, when I was watching Squid Games, by the way, everyone needs to watch Squid Games. Yes, it's so good. <laughs> I kept thinking it's kind of like the Hunger Games, except it's like you know they're not children and they're not yeah <laughs> but it's the same idea like rich people betting on poor people who are fighting exactly it's more it's more brutal yes that's for sure yes <laughs> oh do you know that song by lady gaga love game i think so yeah i kept singing that but singing squid game instead all weekend oh. <laughs> just plug it into the lyrics it works oh out God. really well one of my friends was like uh, i'm gonna take a shot for every squid game costume i see this year <laughs> <laughs> the memes have been pretty fire yeah the memes have been great the memes have been good great uh, show great yes, show yes another digression i'm sorry yeah. uh then we talked about lead that was an interesting one yeah i um really lead is kind of a sp- i want to say spooky but like disturbing topic because uh we let it go on for so long especially the lead in our gasoline yeah um took we've been forever poisoning to get ourselves. taken care of man yeah like we, most things <laughs> yes like most things we've been poisoning ourselves with lead for a long time yeah. it makes me wonder because lead causes violent activity and you know like the peak for american crime was like the 70s mm-hmm. when everyone was using leaded gasoline so did we literally just like create a purge like situation probably. you know probably uh arsenic episode six was arsenic that was a fun one and again arsenic's not something we really have to worry about as it turns yeah, out i mean true. it's there but it's I mean. there but yeah definitely not something to to be like super paranoid about or anything like that episode seven was bugs talk about them giant roaches i hate them i hate them i'm upset we're gonna we're gonna bypass that <laughs> episode eight was rodents which i really liked we talked about raccoons and armadillos oh my and gosh the rats raccoons and mice and the, 
when, what? <laughs> when I went to Austin, I went to this place. It's called Cidercade. They have one here in Houston, too. And it's like this place you can like drink cider and you play like arcade games and stuff. Me and my friend went outside and a bunch of raccoons <laughs> were ba- were out there and they were just chilling, like going in the trash can, like smoking their cigarettes. They were literally like one foot away from me i was like oh, oh my, my god. god and they were like trying to go up to a guy to eat his food oh my god. he was like go away <laughs> they're cute though they were cute they are so cute little trash bastards mm-hmm. um i saw this has nothing to do with raccoons kind of because they get they can carry rabies someone they're like the first confirmed case of animal to human rabies like death just happened recently oh my god and it was an older man who was bit in the face by a bat when he was sleeping i am like haunted by this story oh my god i know and he ended up dying of rabies because he refused the shot because you know with the rabies shot you have to get it like as soon as you get bit if you've seen the office yeah (laughs) (laughs) if you've seen the office um but he was 89 so i guess he was like if i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go out like a zombie I don't know. I would have got the shot. I would have got the shot. The shot is scary too, though. Oh, really? But not as scary as getting oh. rabies. The shot you have to get a bunch of times in, like, in the first one, they inject in the wound. Ooh, and then the and rest, it's on his face. Ah, yeah, yeah. And the rest they put in your stomach or something. Ooh. I don't know. That yeah. does sound a little scary. The whole rabies thing is just freaky. Just stay away from animals. Yeah. Unless they're your pets, right? I guess. Yeah, for sure. Uh, last one was vocs which we learned that everything is poisoning us everything unfortunately so every pleasant smell you've ever smelled has poisoned you every candle you've ever lit. every candle <laughs> i thought about that when i lit a pumpkin spice candle the other day i was like oh me too i lit a candle yesterday and i was like Mm-mm. nice oh, well. snow in your brain <laughs> uh hairspray though I, I dry shampooed yesterday too and i was like here you go just gonna oh. snort this poison like oh, cocaine no. You might as well just spray that aerosol directly up your nostril. No. <laughs> and that brings us to today, yep. our season finale, Building Codes, also our spooky season episode. Yes. Uh, not as spooky as our normal spooky season episodes, though. Yeah, because for sure. The topic is not spooky. The topic um, is not spooky. That was probably uh, poor timing. Building Code scares you. Uh. <laughs> it scares you with how boring it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want, like, I'm not saying turn it off, because we'll make it exciting. But honestly, building codes are not the most uh, exciting thing in the world, yeah, I have to sure. admit. Um, this this episode was difficult for me. This topic I really struggled with just because it's it's so difficult to figure it out. And also, it's very dry to research. Yeah, it was very, yeah. I feel I didn't everything find else. Much. I yeah, didn't find much. <laughs> everything else this season has kind of been sensational to yeah. research. It's like fun. like Especially the first, like, like few ones that we did it was like carbon monoxide oh we went in on carbon monoxide because it was just like there was so much you get a sometimes this is really bad when i'm working on i got this a lot when i was getting my history degree when i'm working on something sensational you get that little thrill that rush of like oh i gotta find out more yeah yeah. but with building codes i was like i go down like a rabbit hole of like yes (laughs) of crazy and you can't really do that with building codes because they're so dry yeah for sure um Anyway, having said that, let's start in the history. You ready? I'm ready. So who do you think started building codes? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> um, 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 I don't know. Uh, Europe? Somewhere in Europe? <laughs> Close. Uh, I was hoping you would say Greeks and Romans. Okay, that's what you I was, get, that's keep going back to that. She was on the that. tip of my tongue, but I was like, what was it again? Like, <laughs> Who were those people? Who were those people again? It's been a while <laughs> since we talked about them. It's actually earlier than the Greeks and Romans. Oh. Yeah. I'm. They're pretty sure building code has been around for a long time. I mean, look at the ancient Egyptians. They were having some sort of uniform building code, right? Mm Because they're they were using angles and their stuff still standing. Yeah, that's actually crazy. Yeah, the first written building code, though, that we have proof that someone was actually like wrote them down and was enforcing them, is the Code of Hammurabi, circa one thousand seven hundred sixty BCE. Oh my God! Yeah, Hammurabi is a great name, by the way. It is a good name. Yeah, I agree. Uh, It. That code consists of 282 laws written in cuneiform on an eight foot tall stone slab. Do you know what cuneiform is? I'm guessing it's some kind of like shapes. I'm going to pull it up. (laughs) You're right. It's it's a type of writing 
And it blows my mind that this was the type of writing someone came up with. Oh, God, it's not letting me Google it. Cuneiform is, um, let me show you. Let me show you. And you can tell us what it looks like. Some sort of a, some sort of hieroglyphic. <laughs> what the? It's like, it looks like a bunch of triangles. Yeah. Cuneiform. A bunch of triangles on sticks. <laughs> yes. That's what it looks like. Literally. Cuneiform. I think they're actually referred to as wedges. Oh, let me pull this up. It took them a long time to decipher cuneiform. How do you even decipher something like that? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, and there were different types of cuneiform. There was Sumerian, um, Babylonian, and Assyrians all had a type of cuneiform variation, and um, which is interesting to me. That's all the same part of the world, by the way. All yeah. very um, Syria, Babylonia, and Assyria are all in the same. North Africa, okay, like light Middle Eastern part, very biblical, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's and crazy. Hammurabi. Hold on, I want to. I want to say he's Babylonian. Yes, he is Babylonian. Okay, he was the sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty. Wow. So the code of Hammurabi was a lot more than just building codes. But for today's class, or today's class, what today's for class? Today's class <laughs> for today's uh, podcast. <laughs> we're just going to talk about Hammurabi in the terms of building code. Yeah, it was the stone was displayed in the public square for everyone to see. So like I said, it was a lot more than building code. So if you needed to be like, so and so did this, you could go and look up on the stone and cite the law. Oh, okay, okay. Pretty nice, huh? Laws number 229 through 233 specifically dealt with building construction. Um, it dealt more with the consequences of building failure rather than how to safely construct a building. For instance, law 229 stated, if a builder builds a house for someone who does not construct it properly and the house which he built fails and kills the owner, then the builder shall be put to death. Wow. I know. Hey, builders. well deserved. Yeah. <laughs> if you got someone killed, there you go. Builders clearly did not have a very strong <laughs> lobby back in it's like uh, either you build it right or you're going down yeah you're going down with them um the captain goes down with the ship all right <laughs> i think they think the idea was that was actually how they enforced building codes like to if you didn't do it right we we will kill you publicly and probably horribly because back then they didn't just like gently put people to death it usually involves something oh, yeah like being eaten by dogs or something. Yeah, um, they did not care. So that was a great way to enforce building code. I will tell you that is not how we enforce new builds today. Builders can pretty much get away with anything. Yeah, in yeah, 2021. you will not die if you. Oh, do it how wrong. the times have changed! Imagine everyone would now nah, get. <laughs> everyone would die. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my source says these um, having punishments such as death was not uncommon for building codes in ancient times. It seems kind of like death was the punishment for everything. Jaywalk, yeah. death. Parking ticket, death. You know, that yeah, type of thing. Sure. Uh, the Bible actually has a building code. What? Yeah. In Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8, a safety feature is required based on past experience. It says, a builder is required. If thou shouldest built a new house, then shalt thou make a parapet to thy house. So thou shalt not bring blood guiltiness upon thy house if one should in any wise fall from it. So apparently they were Quaker, the people who translated this one. But essentially it says that um, if you build a new house, then you need to make a parapet um, so people won't fall off your roof. And a parapet was like a, a, you know, a high wall on your roof so people wouldn't fall off of it. Yeah. Wow, that's it. That's crazy. I didn't know that was in the Bible. That was in the Bible. <laughs> Bible's full of interesting wow. factoid. Also, did you ever watch Cats? Nobody oh, should no. watch. Nobody oh, should no. watch Cats. Oh, no. I will never watch it. <laughs> Watching the trailer for that movie <laughs> made me feel like all kinds of level of uncomfortable. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> There's a character. I never watched the movie, but I've seen the, the stage show oh, yeah. twice. I'm sure it's way better than the movie. That's actually just as weird. But oh, anyway. Oh. Um, okay, never mind. Deuteronomy is the name of one of the cats. Interesting. He's like the head cat. Old Deuteronomy. Ugh. They have a whole song about him. Yeah. Why I just did they agree to do that movie? Isn't Taylor Swift in that movie? Like <laughs> a lot of famous why? people. Are in why that did movie. they do it? <laughs> a lot. Uh, I think Gandalf. I wouldn't even put that on my resume if I was in that movie. <laughs> Judy Dench was in that movie. 
Yeah, a lot of very famous people. Anyway, oh. <laughs> so modern building codes have shifted from outlining punishment to mandating requirements that would make buildings safe and sanitary. We we understand that. Yeah. So when you start to see this shift is really in the 17th and 1800s. So that would be the 18th and 19th century. Uh, a good example is the London Building Act of 1844 that required the improvement of drainage, securing sufficient width of streets to ensure adequate ventilation, regulating explosive works and regulation of de- deleterious works. I need to look that what that means exactly. Each of these requirements came out of uh, a need to improve safety because, you know, the Victorian times, pretty gross time to live. Mm-hmm. <coughs> we talked about, you know, sewage in the streets, everything oh, like that. Yep. Um, and basically they kind of in the Victorians were kind of testing these building laws. So they would make a law and they're like, okay, well that didn't work. We need to add to it or change it. So, um, it's the act of 1844 where they finally kind of all this trial and error, what's going to make a safe sanitary place to live. Interestingly, this act also created the first building inspector. Wow. Yeah. So we can, um, detail the rise the creation story of the home inspector to the act of 1844 in england wow so thank you british people thank you um i think that's really interesting that is interesting i i, I would have never thought that's our that. origin story yep <laughs> we come from the depths of the sewage mm-hmm. to come inspect your home <laughs> that's our origin story um obviously american cities um they're going to kind of push building codes forward because our American cities, we didn't have as big as population as Europe, but they were very dense, especially New York City. Oh, yeah. So, you know, in the 1800s was when you have that huge influx of immigration, like oh, 1880, yeah, yeah. 1890, 1900, 1910, massive influx of immigration to New York City. And it's a terrible situation. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> if you're ever in New York City, I'm choking on air right now. I apologize. If you're ever in New York City... Still choking. We'll cut that out. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, go to the Tenement Museum. Okay. It's really, really interesting. It shows like, 10 people would be living in a room this size. Oh, my God. Yeah. There'd be like a little kitchenette, and then you would have like a chamber pot, or you'd have to go to the like communal toilet out in the hallway. And like they'd have a whole family just living in a room of this size. No windows in some <gasps> no case. No windows. Yeah, no windows. Wow, that's brutal. So, um, in 1867, the city of New York enacted the first tenement housing act, which required fire escapes and a window for every room. But what the landlord started doing is they started cutting windows in between people's apartments. So your window would look into someone's apartment. That's horrible. Yeah. That's actually horrible. Sounds like what landlords would do. They're just going to cover it. Like (laughs) landlords be still doing stuff like that. Oh, you said window. Let me just put it between the walls. So the requirement of the second Tenement Housing Act in 1879 included the insulation of toilets in the building. That's nice. Wow. And that the windows face a source of fresh air and light, not an interior hallway. That's actually scary. Like, imagine if, like, none of this was implemented. Where would we be living right now? I know. What kind of conditions would we be living in if there was no rules? Well, this is even more upsetting. Those two acts were so poorly monitored and enforced that in 1901, they had to pass a third Tenement Housing Act to enforce the first two. Come on. <laughs> Come same on, old, guys. Same old stuff with landlords, right? Yep. Wow, Mm-mm. that's crazy. I never <coughs> knew that. Wow. Still choking. Sorry. The first public building code in California was the 1909 State Tenement Housing Act, similar to the one in New York City. It was to assure safe and sanitary occupancy, especially in San Francisco. You know, San Francisco used to be really dense. Oh, really? Um, And then there was a giant earthquake that killed everybody. Oh, but um, it was very similar to New York. People were just like living on top of each other because San Francisco was a port of entry for Asian um, immigrants. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so among this 1909 California State Tenement Act were minimum ceiling heights, room size, uh, sizes, and requirements for heat. In 1927, the Pacific Coast Building uh, published the first uniform building code. So this is the first uniform building code in the United States is 1927, but only at the state level. Okay. Um, it addressed housing habitability issues and also re- regulated the construction of all buildings. And um, 
there were in that code, the first time you see minimum exit uh, for a building and minimum structural requirements for a building. Wow. So that is uh, 1927. And but again, just on the state level, right? Okay, so not like federal. <clears throat> We're not what you're not hearing in this history is anything on the federal level. It's all you're just... going to talk about that. <coughs> yeah, gosh, it's all it's all just on? um it's all just state. Some some states probably didn't even have anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, imagine <coughs> what am I joking? <laughs> what is happening to me? Oh no. I might have to go upstairs and get something. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. No. Um I mean, imagine <coughs> Imagine the state of Texas like in 1909 when the first Tenement Act, Texas is still like the wild west basically i yeah. mean it was more settled in 1909 but it's still pretty rural and rudimentary mm-hmm. um so it makes sense that the first places you see these building codes are high density areas like new york and california yeah it makes sense they needed it probably so so interestingly um today's building codes are basically built on mistakes that have happened so they're not making building codes to plan for disaster they're making building codes after disaster happened which is where you get asbestos and lead and stuff right that's so sad but i mean i guess it kind of makes sense because it's like how are you gonna how are you gonna anticipate right how are you gonna predict that you know so what that means is each new earthquake fire tornado hurricane or other natural disaster typically results in an update in the building code okay um also as we heard in that video you can have building codes at the state level you can have them at the city level you can have them at the county level and um they can all be enforced in different ways so that's therein lies the rub right that's that's already sounds confusing to me yeah and i think you're going to address some of that a little bit in your section yeah. so uh yeah the history is really short uh like i said this is a very basic topic but we yeah. can thank hammurabi and his wedges Yes, thank you for the, the wedges. Yeah, thank you, Hammurabi. Let's look <laughs> him up real quick. Hammurabi. Hammurabi. Apparently, there's a video game called Hammurabi. Oh, wow. Interesting. From 1810 to 1750 BCE, the sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty of the Amorite tribe, reigning from 790, excuse me, 1792 BC to 1750 BC. Um... Oh, this is interesting. He claims to have received the code of Hammurabi from Samash, the Babylonian god of justice. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, This is one of the first codes to place greater emphasis on the physical punishment of the perpetrator, like the builder. So, yeah, thank you, Hammurabi, I guess. (laughs) I'm trying to see if his name means anything. What an interesting name. It is an interesting name. Hammurabi. Hammurabi. He sounds like it's almost like, I don't know, like a Star Wars character or something. Mm-hmm. Ham, uh, Hammurabi. Or is it? Yeah, Hammurab. I can't spell it. What is going on? Okay, here we go. It means the kinsman is a healer. What is a kinsman? A family member. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. You be you, Hammurabi. <laughs> I'm going to hand it over to you while I go get something to drink so I stop okay. choking. Okay, cool. All right. Stretch. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to talk about first, well, I'm going to talk about three different things a little bit. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, my information might not be the most accurate because. This was very difficult <laughs> to research. Wow. It was very difficult to research. But I did find a little bit of information that is, is useful to know, hopefully. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the ICC, which is the International Code Council. It is the largest international association of building safety professionals. The Code Council is the trusted source of model codes and standards that establish the baseline for building safety globally and create a level playing field for builders and manufacturers. International Code Council Building Safety Solutions draw directly from the expertise that they develop in authoring the international codes and standards um, and apply that to 
product evaluation, accreditation, certification, training and technology. And apparently the ICC is a leading global source of model codes and standards, which makes sense because <laughs> the ICC. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like something that's part of the UN. It but does. It's not. Yeah. It also sounds, um, you know, ICC also stands for International Criminal Code. Oh, think, really? Too. I could be wrong. Interesting. I'm going to Google that. Yeah, so apparently the uh, the Code Council's codes, standards, and solutions are used to ensure safe, affordable, and sustainable communities and buildings worldwide. So thanks, ICC. Thank you. <laughs> um, so for U.S. code, what I found about the U.S. code is that they use the International Building Code. Oh, time out. ICC also stands for International Cricket Council. <laughs> What? Like the game cricket? What the? Oh, okay, okay. I was like, crickets? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I was thinking about the bug. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, so the International Building Code is in use or adopted in 50 states, the District of Columbia, Guam, the Northern... M- 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 how do you say that? I was about to say Marinara. <laughs> Mar- <laughs> Some islands. Marineras? Mariana? Marianas? Marianas, Marina, Mar, Marianas, Marina, Marianas, Marianas, Marianas. I think it's I Marianas. Think. Yeah, the Northern Marianas Islands. Sorry, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> New York City, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Uh-huh. And Puerto Rico. Let's go. So the International International Building Code is a foundation of the complete family of international codes, mm-hmm. and it is an essential tool to preserve public health and safety that provides safeguards from hazards associated with the built environment. It addresses design and installation of innovative material that meet or exceed public health and safety goals. So some benefits of the IVC are the principles of this model code are based on protection of public health, safety, and welfare. This code results in efficient designs that provide flexibility for the code official, designer, engineer, and architect. Provisions of the code encourage the use of new and smarter techno- technological advances. This code emphasizes both prescriptive and engineered solutions and allows the, uh, the use of time-tested methods. And this code references nationally developed consens- consensus standards. There you go. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah, whatever all that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then for Texas, I don't know if this is true, but it says there's there's no statewide mandated building or residential code in Texas. It's true. I was like, I was like, is this true? It's true. We can do whatever we want. Okay. Um, and I'm talking about that. I'll talk about okay, that in my cool, section. Yeah. I just, I just talk about it very briefly. We can do whatever we want with some yeah asterisks there. Okay, there's asterisks involved. You got to read the the fine print, you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, there is no statewide mandated building or residential code in Texas. Municipalities can choose to adopt codes, excluding most unincorporated areas, except for the IECC. The building and residential code is promul promulgated i don't know i'm yeah, so bad promulgated promulgated through legislation and currently cites to the 2003 ibc and 2000 irc yeah yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> that's yeah, pretty much all so i got <laughs> i'm glad you brought up texas we typically use the international code as okay. a reference so the big thing to know is the only thing texas is really concerned about is ingress and egress getting in and out of the house okay if there's a fire trek oh okay Trek is installed, installed, what is in charge of the standards of practices, Mm -hmm. the SOP. Yes. Which is what we as home inspectors have to, uh, inspect to the standard, but that is not code. So Trek inspection is not a code inspector. Yeah. If you want a code inspector, you have to get a code enforcement officer and that's not administrative through Trek. That's administered administered through the texas department of licensing and regulation that sounds complicated it is (laughs) sounds very complicated so uh, the texas department of licensing regulations identifies code as the inspection excuse me the code enforcement inspection as the inspection improvement and rehabilitation of environmental hazards in public and private premises by determining the presence of fire or health hazards nuisance violations unsafe building conditions violations of any fire health or building regulations statutes or ordinance Wow. They're considered an agent of the state. Um, and they actually have like, it's called officer, code enforcement officer. Oh. Now, does this mean that you need to get your house inspected for code? 
Uh, no, actually. Yeah, I would Te- assume not. Yeah. yeah. Texas says that uh, Trek inspection is enough. Um, if you buy a new build, they would have had to get a separate inspection done by a code inspector. So that's not something that you'd have to no. worry about. Exactly. Okay. The big thing I want everyone to remember, though, is that a code inspection is not a Trek inspection and a Trek inspection is not a code yeah, inspection. They're not the same at all. They yeah. do overlap a little bit, though. That's yeah. the big thing to know. What about, so Texas, you said, has no building regulations except for like municipalities. So when you're building something, you need to check with your state or excuse me, with your city or your county. Yeah. So for example, Harris County is going to have um, different uh, building code regulations than Fort Bend County. And the city of Houston is going to have different building regulations than the city of Katy. Okay. Um, so just because Texas itself has no building codes, it doesn't mean your county. Yeah. It doesn't okay. mean you can't just build whatever you want. I'm yeah. sure if you move out into the middle of de- the desert in like, you know, by Big Bend National Park, you can probably build whatever you want. Yeah. I have seen what people are living in out there. And it there's actually, when we went to Guadalupe, we talked to one of the locals and he said there was one of his neighbors lived in a hole in the ground with his chickens. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you can pretty much live. There are parts of Texas where you can pretty much live in whatever you want, but it's not going to be Houston. Yeah, for sure. It, you really just have to look into it depending on where you live. Yeah. Yeah. And so the next question is, is there a federal building code for the United States? And that's kind of a difficult answer um, to look up. And I keep trying to Google it. Um, And I can't really. There's no like clear answer. There's no clear. Yeah. And it's because there is no federally enforced building code, nor is any federal agency in the United States in charge of administering building codes. Wow. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah. The entire United States has no building code. What they've done is, um, you know, that's old chestnut about states' rights, right? Mm-hmm. We know that got us into trouble a couple of hundred years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, building codes come down to states' rights. Oh, oh, so okay. it is the right of each individual state okay. to. So federal is like, hey, that's not our problem. That's exactly. on y'all. That's exactly. on y'all. Okay. Which I find to be a little disturbing. That is, I feel like it'd be better if there was just one that everyone could just look up to. Because uh, that sounds a little scary. <laughs> well, I feel like that's the story of being of state's rights, though. Each state has their own individual law, which is why if you commit a crime in one state, but you live in another state, you have to hire an attorney from the state you committed yep. a crime in. This is true. Uh, it gets really confusing. It does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are no federal building codes. Wow. Yeah. So check in. If you're not listening from Texas, because I know some of our listeners aren't from Texas. Yeah. Check with your state on what your building codes are. But Texas, pretty relaxed. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. I know. And that's all I, I got. I would have personally thought that there was like, at least I thought, like, there's a building code that everybody follows. It's the same everywhere. Like, I didn't know. Like, whenever I, I like put this down, I was like, is this right? Yeah. <laughs> it feels wrong, doesn't it? I was it? scared to say it. I was like, is this correct? Like, <laughs> And maybe something we should define is... Or maybe someone who's listening that's not a home inspector. What are we talking about when we say building codes? We're talking about ingress and egress. So exiting in and out. We're talking about obvious fire hazards, mm-hmm. um, electrical plugs, panel box fire hazards, your plumbing, making sure you're plumbing your gas lines, making sure those are done correctly. Um, what else could be a building code? Your roof, that every house that's has a all, roof. That's pretty much all Walls. the important things. <laughs> yeah, how the house is constructed, like the joist, yeah. you know. Um, so there, building code just basically means the safety of the house you're living in. Okay, just making sure that it's safe and, yeah. you know, your house isn't going to fall on you. And I probably gonna... should have identified that at the beginning of the podcast, but. Yeah. You've made it this far, yeah. so. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but pretty, yeah, it, it makes sense though. I mean, that's what I thought building code was pretty much like how you should build your house. Yeah. You know, or how it should be built. A big thing to note is builders, because they're not put to death anymore, can do whatever they want. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I was like, and so when they tell you, you don't need a home inspection because they've had a code inspection done, that doesn't mean anything. Just because the code inspection was done means the home is safe to live, but that doesn't mean it's livable, Right. So, for example, with my house, um, it was a new build, and they said we didn't have to get an inspection. Of course, we inspected it, right, Yeah. home inspectors. And we found that, so, yeah, the building code passed, so the house was, you could live in it, 
but it wasn't livable. And why wasn't it livable? It's because someone poured grout down our shower drains. Really? Yeah. What so every time heck? you took a shower, it flooded the bathroom. <gasps> Oh my god! Yeah, and so yeah, the house could be lived in, but it wasn't livable. No, yeah, for sure. If someone says you don't need an inspection, there's a code inspection. No, no. <laughs> like no. Um, my fiance's cousin, she's my age. Oh, she just bought a house. She just bought a house. And what she, does she do for a living? It's complicated, but she just bought a house. Mm. And um, what's it called? She she found she went through a bunch and like she had to get them inspected and there was like one that she really wanted but yeah. after she got it inspected there was problems with it so she ended up going with another house so and yeah so it building, makes a difference building code would have said in most cases you can live in this house but a home inspection is like well it's not actually live a bull right yeah on that note um I think we've we're done with codes i, I, I think, think we're so. done with season three i think so I th- we did it <laughs> we did it i always feel like such a huge sense of accomplishment every time we get to a season finale it takes work it's, it takes work it is work and like i don't think anyone realizes how busy we both are so to like yeah get- to coordinate that's why it takes us months to get through it because yeah we got work to do man <laughs> i know i know some of us are never home <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> True. <laughs> um well i'm really excited for season four i don't know where we're going with season four yet yeah, i haven't had the time. strength we got time to yeah. think about it I'm we'll f- be back in january of 2022 yeah we're gonna take a, a few like two months to we rest. gotta recover yeah. from season three yeah we need like two two and a half months yeah. to rest here <laughs> on that note i can't believe it's 2022 already me either. And you know, I'm about to be 25 and it's not fair. <laughs> I'm like, I should still be 23. I should barely be turning 24. You know, the last oh, that's two years. Right. You lost 24, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I didn't do anything. I think I just stayed home yeah. <laughs> for my 24th birthday. But I, that's crazy. I know. I'm sorry. I know. I'm trying to think of what I was doing when I was 24. I got married <laughs> when I was 24 and I moved to Texas when I was 24. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was a not... I mean, yeah, I got married, but the rest of the year wasn't that great, yeah. honestly. <laughs> uh, it was really a difficult adjustment. And we lived in a roach-infested oh. apartment. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, and we were starting the business. Crazy. I know. I'm not going to give the years. I don't want anyone doing the math. <laughs> Figuring out how old I Figure am. Figuring out, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess you did. You lost a whole year. We all I lost know. a whole year. Yeah, we all did. So guys, just subtract a year whenever it's your birthday. Exactly. No one's going to ask you We're about all a it. year younger. <laughs> you know, do you think this year, I know I'm, me personally, if we can digress a little bit, I felt this year has gone by really fast. I agree. And do you think it's because last year it felt like it was going by so slow? I feel like, yeah, probably because obviously, like, I wouldn't say things are totally back to normal because there's a lot of places where things are not normal at all yeah and we're lucky that we can even like actually go outside and do activities because true last like last year i wasn't doing anything like now barely am i starting to go back out and like do things with my friends again yeah. and stuff like that we're all getting vaccinated mm-hmm. and i just got fully vaccinated so i'm ready she's ready she's ready to go into 25 yeah fully vaccinated <laughs> well I hope 2022 is better. That's all I can say. Me too. We said this at the end of last season. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we, we did. did. And then Delta Variant <laughs> like, said, like, bye hey. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Next time we talk, everything's going to be fixed. It was not fixed. Yeah, it was not. It was not fixed. <laughs> but next time we talk in 2022, everything's going to be fixed, right, ECs? I really hope. ECs, <laughs> tell me it's going to be fixed. I really I hope. I can't handle this. I know. <laughs> I cannot handle this. So I hope to see you when everything is back to normal in 2022 hopefully whatever you consider normal now yes uh so i hope everyone has a great spooky season yes great turkey day a great and, holiday mm-hmm. all three all three yeah one. flying spaghetti monster whatever you celebrate yep. i hope it's great we're so excited to that you joined us for season three mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we hope to see you in season four yep uh and i'm mary and i'm Isis. and we're the home girls and we'll see you in 2022 Sheesh. <laughs> I know. We did it. All right. That's it for our live. Thank you so much.